Hello everybody. This is going to be your first official lecture of Chem 152, so hope you're ready to go. So as you're watching the video, this video goes with the PowerPoints, and you heard a dog bark in the background. That will happen sometimes. So this goes with the PowerPoints, so I would suggest you uh, click through the slides uh, while you're watching the video, and of course you can certainly hit pause on the video if you need to review things or slow down or speed up or whatever. All right, this is going to start off with some very introductory material. This is a science class, so let's start off with some definitions and a definition of what science is. A good definition of science is a body of information and an approach to problems based on observation and experiment. And of course, observations are things that are measurable, and experiment means it's testable. So you could say science is anything that's measurable and testable. So scientific method, <coughs> excuse me, has these steps, so observation, question, hypothesis, controlled experiments, and theory. So we're just going to go through it, and I'll thread a couple of examples through as we go. So an observation is, like we said, it's something measurable. Typically, it's anything you can see, hear, touch, taste, or feel. Now, if you were to walk into a modern science lab, you know, you don't really, you see a lot of computers and, and little wires and probes and sticks sticking into flasks and stuff. And all those things do is expand the senses. So examples are microscopes or a telescope, right? You can't see things really far away or things really small, but we have microscopes. Uh, you can, you know, you can hold something in your hand and you can say this is hotter than this, but you can't say the temperature, so we have thermometers. Uh, you can measure very small amounts of electric current. So they're just expanding our senses. Um, and so let's just do a couple examples here. So, <clears throat> so Newton's apple, right? The story of Isaac Newton's apple. So an Isaac Newton is sitting under an apple tree. An apple falls down. Newton makes an observation. The apple fell down. Uh, saccharin is a sweetener. And uh, this is a really interesting example. This is an example. A scientist didn't wash his hands after he was working in a lab. His name was Constantin Falberg. And he noticed a sweet taste on his hand one evening and put it together that it was from benzoic sulfimid, which is now saccharin. All right, but the observation was, this tastes sweet. All right. Now, the question, the next step of the scientific method. So observations happen all the time, and though it's the first step of the scientific method, it's actually not scientific. It doesn't become scientific until we question the observation. So in the case of Newton's apple, why did the apple fall down, right? Apple's been falling off of trees forever. Newton said, well, why did the apple fall down? Falberg could have just said, oh, this is sweet, cool. But instead, Falberg said, well, why is, why is my hand sweet? All right, so this, this next step, there's some confusion and it's caused some controversy. So frequently there's words that have different meanings in science and in the general population and people use them interchangeably. And you'll see that throughout this semester. But for example, a lot of people will say, oh, this is my theory, but it's actually a hypothesis. So let's talk about the differences here. So once we have a question, we propose a hypothesis. We don't, it's not a theory. People would say, oh, my theory is my hands got in something sweet. But that's actually a hypothesis. Let me explain. So a hypothesis is an educated guess to answer the question. So it's stuff we already know, but then we're going to answer the question. So why did the apple fall down? This is an example. Well, we know everything falls down. So a possible hypothesis. Something is pulling it down. Or maybe something is pushing it down. And I put in pushing, I mean, we know now that it's gravity, and gravity is a pull. But, um, you know, he could have proposed pushing and just found out later that it wasn't true. Fallberg's idea, right? Why are my hands sweet? I know I didn't wash my hands, so that's the educated part of the guess. Maybe something from the lab is on my hands. And then, well, what did I work with? And now you see how one question can lead to others. The key to a hypothesis, though, is a hypothesis has not been tested. It's just a proposal, right? So that's very, very important. A hypothesis is untested. It's basically a guess. Now, once we form a hypothesis, we test that hypothesis using controlled, <clears throat> controlled experiments. So give yourself a moment, hit pause, and think, what does it controlled mean? But don't say controlled. Don't say you're controlling this or you're controlling that. So we'll give it a minute. So we're going to do this. I will give you time. I'm only going to count to five, but you can hit pause, obviously. 
right? So a controlled experiment means we test one variable at a time. It's called controlled because we control the other variables. So, you know, if we think it could be caused, something could be caused by the temperature or how long something sat, we wouldn't change the temperature and let things sit for different periods of time. We would do different tests. So we have to separate the variables. It's not always easy because sometimes we don't know what all the variables are. So let's use the example of the sweet, the, the Fallberg thing. And let's say Fallberg had worked with three compounds that day, and we'll just call them A, B, and C. Think about what tests might you do to find out what made his hands sweet. So hit pause, see if you can figure, come up with something. Welcome back from pause. Let's see how you did. And yeah, you would test each one separately, right? A alone, B alone, C alone. And then maybe you would test mixtures, right? A, B, A, C. Maybe it wasn't any of them. Maybe it's only when they're mixed together. Right? And there's one more. Uh, you might just kind of look and see if it was something else. Maybe it was something that happened when you got home. But if none of them were. All right, now, controlled experiments can tell us two things. They can tell us, oops, you guessed wrong. Or they can tell us that we were right. We'll do one at a time. So if we guess wrong, well, what do we do? We guess again, right? So it was a guess anyway. And actually, there's a lot of wrong hypotheses that scientists come up with, but very quickly we go, well, that was a guess and it was wrong. That's why we test things, right? So if it's wrong, we guess again. So for example, backing up to Fallberg, I think it was substance A. We test substance A. Nope, wasn't substance A. I think it was substance B, and so on and so forth. All right. If it confirms our hypothesis, then we have, ready, a theory. So again, remember theory and hypothesis are used interchangeably. People say my theory, but they really mean their hypothesis because the theory is tested. So this is very, very important. A theory is an explanation confirmed by controlled experiments. A hypothesis is untested, a theory is tested. That's very, very important. Okay, and like I've been saying, right, it causes problems. People just, you know, don't understand that theories are tested. So when we have a scientific theory, people think theory and they think, oh, it's just a thought, it's just a guess, or just what we think. But if we are calling it a theory in science, it means we have data that says it's true. We've tested it. Uh, there's no absolutes in science. Everything is a theory. It, uh, some of them have been around for really, really a long time. And actually, uh, in an ensuing set of slides, I'm going to show you an example or two. All right, still can be proven wrong. Okay, because uh, sometimes we just have no way to test. So, for example, X-rays. Um, when x-rays were discovered. So the laws of physics, a lot of the laws of physics were well understood, or so we thought, and then x-rays were discovered in the 1800s, and then they said, oops, and then to go back and test a lot of laws of physics, because no one knew x-rays were there. And some stuff, they said, guess what, it was x-rays, and some stuff, they said, no, actually, it was right. All right, before we go much further, let me just see how many more slides we have. Um, I want to spend a couple minutes on this, but I'm going to break this up into two sets of slides. So, uh, I'm sorry, two videos. So I'm going to stop here for a second. Exit. And I'll come back to, I'll start here on a second video. So it'll be Scientific Method 1, Scientific Method 2, or Intro 1, Intro 2.